Hello, welcome to Abiding Life Studios. I'm Noah Wells. Today I have with me Shay Wells. Hi. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> and I also have Steve and Barb Reinhardt with us. Hi. Hi, Hello. Noah. Hi, Shay. Hi, Barb. Good to be with you guys. Good to be with you, as always. So we had uh, a guy get a hold of us um, and he wanted us to talk about a certain subject. We'll probably talk about this subject probably more than once. I think we all agree that it's a, an important conversation, but Shay's going to read what he asked and then we'll just get into it. So part of his email said, I would love for you to do a podcast on hearing God's voice. You talk about having these fantastic conversations with God that go on for hours. To me, this sounds amazing. Despite many years of abiding, it's one area that I seem to have the most trouble understanding. So I would be very grateful if you are able to talk about this at some point. All right. What do you guys think of that? I think it's a great question. Yeah, super great question. And I have uh, one of you for when I first heard that question, it's like, oh, yeah, I have that same question. And despite years of abiding, uh, I don't actually have that experience of having prolonged conversations with God like mm -hmm. that, like, like kind of like he described. And I'm not exactly sure what he was thinking. And 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 here's another idea I just had a, a thought about that was that maybe he's calling BS. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> you know, maybe if he if he was talking to me, he definitely would be, and I would have to you know, go guilty as charged. You know, yeah. BS for sure. Barb, what about what were you? Well, say? I, I think we need to clarify from the beginning. Noah, do you have hours long conversations with God? Is that how that always looks sometimes looks um i would say very very rarely looks i could probably number on one hand times that that's ever happened where it's been longer than 15 minutes of chatting with him where i know he is talking to me and yeah usually it's usually it's only a couple words that kind of just get me through the day. But not saying I don't talk. I talk to him during the day, most days, all day long. I'm always trying to keep that door open of relationship. I am always, so I'm always giving him a bleeding ear, let's say that, because I am constantly telling him everything about my day, everything, every bad feeling I have, every hateful feeling I have. I'm always talking to him about that. And I don't, I'm just saying this right now. I don't always get an answer. Sometimes I get nothing and that doesn't stop me from talking. It used to, when I was younger, it would really frustrate me because I would think he should be talking to me more. And then I would just not talk to him. But now being older, I definitely don't let that happen. I just keep talking to him and keep talking to him every day. I just always am talking to him about crazy things. So I don't know if that answers your question. Well, I think it does. It does happen that way, but maybe what we want to talk about is how do we hear from God? What are the ways that we hear him? Um, how often or the length of it, all of that, all the above. Yeah. Uh, but it's good, I think, that you clarified that up front, that that's not always the case. It could happen, sure. Yeah, I think it could happen. And I would definitely say, like, looking at my dad, I would think he had talks, you know, hours on end with God. But, you know, that's where I get in trouble a lot is when I compare myself with other Christians and, you know, where their journey is with Christ. Well, and there were probably a lot of times that he didn't hear from God at all, just mm -hmm. because I think sometimes there's like this stigma or notion that being in ministry or being in preaching or something that you must hear from God all the time. And it must be this, this relationship that I can't have because I'm not in ministry. Mm -hmm. 
and I'm just a, a normal person, quote unquote. But I think sometimes people look at people who are in a faith-based profession, I guess, and go, oh, well, see, they're closer to God. So they must hear from God. Mm -hmm. And I'm not in that. But I mean, I know for a fact, being married to you, that there are many times that you've never heard from God and it's frustrating. Mm -hmm. And even a few times that you've been told no from God, that was like, wait, I've been praying and I've been giving this to you. And you just told me no. Yeah. Something I that want. sucks, <laughs> yeah. you know, but I think that sometimes people think, oh, I'm not hearing from God because I'm not in ministry or I don't pray enough or I don't read my Bible enough. And I think that there's like this notion of God will only talk to you if you're on like a different level, spiritual which, level. which there is no spiritual level. Like it's a relationship with God. But I think sometimes we think, oh, you must hear from God because you're in ministry. Mm -hmm. I'm not in ministry, so I don't hear from God. Yeah, Shay, also our... Our listener who gave us this great question and topic, uh, he he kind of uh, brought up one of like my uh, goofy beliefs when he said, "Well, I've been abiding for years. Mm. Uh, you know, I should not, I should not, should I should be able to hear from God all and have these uh, intimate conversations all the time, right? Right. Uh, so if you abide enough, you know that, and that's the mm -hmm. if you abide enough. Uh, then you'll be able to hear from God. Then you'll be able to really get to straight scoop. Uh, and so, uh, so, so maybe one of the things as we start off our conversation about hearing the voice of God uh, would be um, that it's different. Yeah. For different times, different people, different ways. Uh, and, and that we would want to start with you know, that it's different uh, than, and, and I would like to throw out just like everything else with the Lord, it's not conditional. I think mm -hmm. some people think it's condition. If you know, if you live like the greatest life, if you're perfectly holy, uh, if you're abiding, uh, then you hear, but I just, I just read the story about uh, Saul's conversion who became Paul uh, and he was going around killing everybody. He was his, you know, his goal, his agenda was to destroy the church. And he was going out killing people and killed uh, Stephen. Um, and yet the Lord met him right exactly where he was. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would think for me, that would be another thing that I would say is a principle of um, listening to the Lord and hearing his voices. He uh, speaks to me right where I am, uh, right now, right today, mm -hmm. in, right in the situation that we're in. Where, and and I, let's acknowledge it. Last week was crazy. We had the attack on the Capitol and the last month's been crazy with the election and the last year's been crazy with coronavirus. And the, so the whole uh, world's kind of upside down right now. And then Noah told me today, oh my gosh, we're gonna have martial law. <laughs> And so, uh, so just all of those things that are going on, um, I'm grateful to be able to know that if with all that going on, that the Lord meets me mm -hmm. right where I'm at right now with all my goofy beliefs and, um, uh, you know, funny opinions and uh, he, he'll meet me and he'll talk Steve to me. Mm -hmm. So I would say like, for me, that would be important principle that, that you bring up a really good point in that he speaks to us as individuals yes mm -hmm. i've never i don't dream dreams i don't have visions maybe i've had one or two mm -hmm. but that i have i know some people who talk about that all the time oh mm -hmm. i had this vision or i had this dream and in it the lord spoke to me i'm i'm not naysaying that whatsoever it's just not me mm -hmm. but he, to me through nature he speaks mm -hmm. to me through a voice inside a thought that i didn't come up with right um, you know that when that thought comes up and we, and we talked about this earlier um that it produces a peace or a, it resonates with me it doesn't produce fear or uh, anxious anxiety mm -hmm. um so it could, it could be a scripture that comes to mind. So that's, for me, that's 
that's how he speaks to me. But for each of you, I think he could, he probably speaks differently. Yeah, I think he knows how we're going to listen the best, right? Mm -hmm. And some people are, sees it through dreams or visions or just talks right to him. But like, are you audibly, I've heard of people. Yeah, or yeah, exactly. I mean, I can go take a walk in the woods and hear from God very easily. And, but I've also been, you know, people have questioned that before. You shouldn't go out to nature. You got to go to the Bible. You got to go to church to hear God. I mean, that was one of my main reasons I went to Bible school is because growing up, I couldn't read the Bible. So the only thing I had was to talk to God. So that's all I would do just all the time talking to God. But then I went to Bible school because hoping, you know, hey, everyone's saying this is where you hear God the most reading your Bible. Well, I want that. So let me do that. So, you know, I compared myself with everyone else, went out, went to Bible school I didn't hear God at Bible school. It just drove me crazy. I, I, I think I felt Satan's presence more than anything. Hmm. So then after that, God, I mean, I heard God very clearly tell me, you need to go to Australia. And I was like, Australia? And it was, that was it. That's all he said to me. You need to go to Australia. I said, well, what do I need to go to Australia for? This is crazy. So I called my mom and said, hey, God woke me up in the middle of the night and told me I need to go to Australia. And she goes, it's so funny. Two days ago, Stretch, guy in Australia, has a farm and he wants you to come out and work on the farm with him. And she goes, so I'll buy your ticket. I'll send you there. And that's where she did. And, that, and that's where I really started understanding the relationship with God. I was out in the middle of absolutely nowhere. No one was around. And every day I would just talk to him, talk to him. And I was struggling. I'm not saying I'm perfect. I was, you guys all know I have pretty bad struggles and I was struggling pretty hard still out there, but I would just constantly talk to him, talk to him and talk to him. And that's where I really started figuring out. I don't really care if he talks back to me. I just know he's there and I know he's inside me. And I know for a fact, if I ask something that I really need, he will come. Like the first time I went to Australia, I got, you know, I couldn't, I'm telling you guys, I couldn't read anything. I didn't, words did not make sense to me when I went. And I was like, okay, now how am I supposed to find my plane? If anyone's gone to LAX, I'll understand this. How am I supposed to find my plane? So I get off and I'm just sitting on the sidewalk, looking around going, what am I supposed to do? And right there, I said, God, please help me. Help me find my plane. Right then a man came up to me and goes, hey, you look like you need help. So I told him what I needed. The guy took me right to my plane and I was off. And that's the cool thing about God. He will show up when- No, no you just mentioned the two things that I think that helped me uh, understand when the Lord's speaking. And, and one is uh, it's confirmed by other people. Because mm -hmm. honest, honestly, I have to say that often and in, especially as a young believer, I made lots of mistakes thinking the Lord was talking to me uh, when he actually wasn't. And mm -hmm. so, but one of the things that you had mentioned was like, you called your mom, said, hey, I, Lord told me, woke me up out of the deep sleep and said, go to Australia. And she confirmed it she, yeah. because so, so someone else confirmed it for you. Uh, and, and you also had that answered prayer. Um, and you ended up in Australia. Thankfully, the guy wasn't some crazy nut that put you on a plane to you know, yeah. Afghanistan or something. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, so I think that's another good principle for us uh, to ask people we respect um, and uh, that, that we know care about us mm -hmm. when we think of, uh, we've heard the voice of the Lord. Uh, just not, not that we need their approval or anything, uh, but I just know for myself that Oftentimes I'm, I have been mistaken actually. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so it's nice to be able to rely on each other. Yeah, I agree. It's and, good to have those people close to you that will be honest. Yeah, who will tell you, oh my gosh, Steve, that's the nuttiest thing I've ever heard. Mm -hmm. you know, we need yeah. friends like that. Yeah. Barb, what do you think? 
Oh, I think that's true. That's re really cool because I hadn't thought of that before when I was thinking about this before the podcast, but that's true. Mm -hmm. um, the Lord does bring people to confirm and he is speaking through them essentially what he's mm -hmm. already spoken into your heart. That's really cool. Yeah. Shay, you got anything? So Shay, what's your take on this? Well, I was just thinking about how, you know, I didn't grow up with faith. I didn't grow up even knowing really that God could talk to you. This was, it was like a new concept when I met Noah and heard the abiding life message. It was so opposite from what I had been raised on was basically like God's voice was a big booming voice. And if you don't hear the big booming voice, God like doesn't care about you. Like he's not listening to you. And that's how I felt for so many years. And even going through like being a, abandoned at a young age and then getting pregnant with a drug addict and leaving him. And I was talking to God through all of those, but I was like, God's not talking to me. So I'm just going to keep going. Right. I'm just going to keep putting one foot in front of the other and living my life and pray when I remember to, but you know, I'm not reading my Bible. So not God's not going to talk to me. And now I can look back at how many times God did talk to me through that and guided my steps through it that I think so many times we're searching for such a huge booming voice that we're missing that God is literally guiding every single step through whispers most of the time or no or no talking at all but he's still guiding you through and I think sometimes we're so looking for this big booming voice that we're missing that sometimes, you know, when you walk into a room and you have this thought that you would think was like your intuition or your conscience or something, but it feels good. And, and you go and you talk to somebody that you're like, why did I just go have that conversation with somebody? And you maybe not see that that is actually God guiding you. So it's only been like the last year or so that I've actually like can say that I've heard God um, and it's not often, but I can still see him caring for me and I can still see him guiding me without hearing that voice. Mm. So, but it's only like the last year that I've actually like heard him. Yeah. Cool. That's beautiful. I think it's a matter of recognizing, like you said, like he was speaking to you all along yeah. Mm -hmm. No. To hear it, you didn't. You didn't recognize it, and yeah. once you, once you, um, I had this experience. It's not about speaking or hearing um, God, but um, in the middle of the night, I woke up one time, and the presence. I I had always wanted to know the presence of God, and His presence was gone. I mean, it was black. It was dark. Um, it not just physically, but inside. And I said, well, I know that you're here by faith. I know you're here, mm -hmm. but I don't feel you. Mm -hmm. And just within minutes, then he gave me his presence back. Mm -hmm. And then I realized from that, that his presence is always there, but it's just not wrecking. Like you said, it's a whisper. It's something that you learn to key into something that you become more familiar with recognizing. Yeah. So um, mm -hmm. I think by faith, he is speaking to us. He spoke to us when we first came to the Lord, mm -hmm. first came to him. Mm -hmm. Otherwise we wouldn't have. Yeah. Yeah, and that's true. And so what, what would your guys' thoughts be on, do you think God talks to unbelievers? He did to me before I got saved. Exactly. And I think yeah. he does too. I think he does talk to all unbelievers. What do you think, Steve? I think he talks to all of us, but you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, well, if, if he, if he doesn't, then, uh, you know, I don't know. How did we come to Christ? Yeah, exactly. And I, I probably have a different take on on that and and also uh, you know as your dad and the abiding life message is uh, that oftentimes we're uh, unbelieving believers mm -hmm. and he never stops talking to us uh, 
even when we're unbelieving believers. Uh, and I, I think that's uh, super important for us to recognize that we don't have to have, have it all together to have that connection. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, it's a, it's a relationship where it's what we're talking about is what Absolutely. You know, it's not necessarily audible voices. Like for me, it sounds kind of weird, but oftentimes when I take a walk, um, the way I, he communicates through me, I've got these cool new boots somebody gave me. I really like them a lot. And I and oftentimes while I'm walking out there, it's like, oh my gosh, I feel like I'm absolutely connected to God through my feet mm -hmm. with my new cool boots somebody gave me. Uh, and I and it, so I have this sense of, uh, you know, like I'm walking in history and uh, one with one with the Lord and with everyone else. And there's nothing that can separate me from the love of Christ. And, I, and it's not and it's a sensation, actually, that comes through my feet, mm -hmm. just stomping along the trail. So, you know, I th so I think that kind of goes back to. Um, uh, you know, he does communicate with us in different ways. And I thought maybe Barb brought up a good point. Uh, you know, in one of your dad's messages, he talks about when, in fact, we did a whole men's retreat on listening to the Lord and communicating with him uh, that as the, how to distinguish between the voice of the uh, enemy and the voice of the Lord. Mm -hmm. you guys, are you interested in talking about that or should we do that for another podcast? No, I think that'd be great to talk about right now. And Barb's really got a keen ear for listening to the Lord. So I, you know, I'm going to throw that your way. You are. Yeah. Well, I, I think I alluded to it earlier. When I hear his voice, it brings recognition, uh, like a peace or a resonance. Uh, yeah, that, that makes sense. If I'm, especially if I'm worried or troubled and it's like, it's like a shift suddenly onto a different sense of well-being instead of fear and anxiety, whereas I do get a lot of the opposite, especially lately, like, oh no, what's going to happen? What's our future going to be? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I didn't even think of it till we've been talking about it today, that that is not the voice of the Lord. In fact, what he has said to me in the midst of all this is, I know what's going on. Yeah. And that just brought immediate peace to me. It's like, oh, okay, I can chill a little, but then I get thrown back into it. Mm -hmm. And and I think that the enemy does um, do that. And I'm thankful that the Lord corrects that. He does insert himself into that because I'm not doing it. So yeah. I don't, what do you guys think? Yeah, I think I get tricked a lot. I think I, I think Satan talks to me and then I... I go down that path of feeling shame and guilt and it takes me, you know, sometimes it takes me a couple of weeks to realize what I'm doing. And then I'm like, Oh man. Then I say in the name of Jesus, leave me. And then I try to move forward, you know? And usually as soon as I say that I do have a, I always, I always look at it. I see things in pictures. So I always, feel like I'm wearing a heavy backpack and as soon as I say that in the name of Jesus leave I always feel like I'm taking that backpack off or at least I'm taking some of the weight off that out of that backpack because I don't know I know we've talked about this before you know when the enemy is talking to me the reason why it affects me so much is because I believe it whatever he's telling me if I'm stupid or I don't belong in ministry or I'm a bad husband, it's because I believe that. And all he has to do is whisper that little thing to me and then I run with it. And I wish I could sit here and say, I don't get tricked a lot. And, you know, I'm starting to figure it out, but I, I don't, I still get tricked every day. And it's crazy to me because I know what's there. I, I know that feeling but I still dive into it. I still dive into the self-pity and uh, hating myself. I'm very, very easily to hate myself. I hate the way I look. You know, I hate the side of my face. 
you know, there's all sorts of things I can come up with that I hate about myself. It's not that hard. But yeah, I think I probably went too much on a tangent about the enemy, but I despise him with everything in me because he bugs, I think, so many of us. And we just, we can destroy ourselves so easily with that. And most people who call me, you know, with whatever problem they're going through, I like to always bring that up right away is, hey, while we're sitting here talking, while I'm talking to you about things in your mind right now, saying the name of Jesus, leave me. And I said, by the time we're done talking, I want to know how you feel in that or, or interrupt me and tell me you're feeling better or, or not feeling better. And most of the time, guys will interrupt me in the middle and go, oh my goodness, I feel so much better already. Well, because we have something in us, we have Jesus in us, and we can actually fight Satan. But I feel like nobody really talks about it that much. What do you guys think of that? Do you think that's strange? Well, I think we didn't talk about the butcher and the shepherd's voices, did we? No. That's one thing that your dad used to talk about. And that is the voice of the enemy is like a butcher, is a butcher. Yeah. He's out to kill. Yeah. He's out to kill. And the voice of the shepherd is kind and loving and caring, mm -hmm. compassionate. So I think what you've, what you've described is that, isn't it? I think so. And it's, it is crazy, though, that I listen more to the butcher sometime than the... <laughs> well, I think it's... I'm going to say something a little controversial. Steve's going to like it. I feel like it's easier to listen to Satan than it is to God, because especially like if you look at your environment, your surroundings right now, it's easier to go down a path of fear and it's easier to hate yourself and it's easier to feel shame and it's easier to feel guilt. Those things are easy. I told my dad once when he left when I was 17 and a year later I spoke to him and, and he was trying to reconcile things. And I said, I'll never not hate you. And he goes, well, why? And I said, it's easier to hate you than it is to forgive you and love you. Mm -hmm. It's so much easier. I think as a human to go down to follow the fear, to follow the shame, to follow the guilt than it is to stop those feelings and actually pivot that 180 and go into where God has you. At least for me, it's easier to sit in that fear and go, I hate myself. My life sucks. This isn't going right. That isn't going right. Instead of going, okay, whatever, but what does God have for me? I think it takes a lot of willing to be weak. Mm -hmm. and willing to say this is hard this is scary but what does God have in it and I think we were talking about that this morning how you know we woke up full of peace I journal every morning and I just wrote thanking God for his peace that I feel so much peace and love right now and and, you know, then you pull up your social media and it's nothing but fear and go do this and go do that and prepare for this. And this is going to happen. And then you start going, what do we do? Mm -hmm. Well, what we do is we sit in God's peace as weak people, but it's so much harder to sit with God in weakness than it is to walk in fear and strength is what I think. All right. What do you guys think? Well, I, 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 I agree with you um, up to a point. It's easy. It's, it is much easier until you want to sell yourself destruct. Yeah. And that mm -hmm. really sucks. Yeah. yeah. So until your whole life's full of rage and hate and yeah. you're angry all the time and you're anxious all the time and you're afraid all the time and, and, and you're, and you keep believing that, uh, BS we hear from the enemy of condemnation, criticism, mm -hmm. guilt, and shame, and uh, and at some point it it actually becomes work yeah. to maintain that stuff, mm -hmm. and it actually takes a lot of work and it takes a lot of energy to keep believing that. And the re and the reason I say that is when I let go of it, 
It's like, oh my gosh, this is easy. This is freedom. Yeah. What, the, what have I been doing to myself and all the people around me? Yeah. And then I go back and you know what Jesus said about following him? It's easy. Yeah. yeah. And like Noah's, I've, I've got this cool Bible Noah gave me and in the front of it, I kept the card he gave it to me. And, and it says inside the card, uh, it is that easy. Mm -hmm. Like, can it be that easy? It is that easy. Yeah. And so, uh, I agree with you hundred percent, Shay. When we're in the middle of that, it's really easy. Uh, it's kind of fun, actually. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> Sometimes I have to admit. Uh -huh. being, a victim, being a victim is like there's a lot of fun and there's a lot of power in being a victim. Oh yeah. A lot of reward in being a victim. A it's yeah. it's so easy to go down that path and it is fun for a moment and God only lets us get away with it for this long until finally he's like no you're done and then you're stuck in anxiety and depression and broken <laughs> relationships. So let me be the, like the normal devil's advocate and say, uh, uh, have you ever changed your mind about hating your dad? Yeah. I think actually this year has been very growing in mm -hmm. our relationship where um, I no longer hate my dad. It was one of those 17, 18 year old, I'm going to play the victim. You left me and I'll never forgive you for this kind of thing. Uh, where in all reality, there was a toxic marriage involved that, that really needed to be separated. But I took that as you left me and without seeing that. And this year I've been able to kind of remove myself and see both of my parents for who they are as people and for who they are in their pain and in their growth. And actually, recently I had this moment where um, somebody in my life had kept just doing these things that were so painful. And I was sitting there like, the next time I talk to this person, I'm going to tell them like, stop doing this. And God sat me down it was one of the few times I've heard God. And he was like, this is not your fight to fight. Let it go. Shut up and let them say their things. Like I'm working on it. And it took so much pressure off of me because I feel like I have to fix all the relationships in my life. And this year has been like, I can put boundaries that protect my heart and protect my kids and protect my husband. And we can put boundaries on people but I don't need to fix them. And so I can let go of that fear and pain and people pleasing and all of the things that kind of plagued me through divorce and all of the things and just go, you're not mine to fix. So here's a boundary and here you go. So that's kind of how this year has gone was been a lot of like learning healthy boundaries and learning to have new relationships with both of my parents really. But I no longer hate them. Well, that's cool. That's cool. That's and really that, you, that was, you, you just really gave us uh, the kind of like uh, hearing God in a capsule, uh, actually, over this last year of how you've heard God in a capsule and the things that have happened. That's is really beautiful. Yeah. It's felt much better than trying to be the strength in the relationship because I was always trying to be the strong one holding everybody together. And I realized that's well, not my job. Well, and you learned, I think, too, with our marriage, you were, you know, you would constantly, like I, when I was struggling really bad, you know, I would get up, you could tell it on my face, I was struggling, I'm heading off to work, you know, I'm not going to kiss you or hug you, because that's the time I was ahead, or I don't want to touch you at all. And what would God tell you every time? Just love him. Exactly. And that's what you did for year after year after year. And then God finally hit me over the head and made me realize some stuff. And many years later, yeah, many years later, but it wasn't quick. <laughs> no, it was not a fast fix. And I think sometimes we feel like we pray and we pray and we pray and we pray. So God should be answering us. So almost like we know that God's love is unconditional, but his speaking to us is conditional. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I know that you love me. I'm checking all the boxes. Why aren't you talking to me? Well, all God told me was one time, really. I mean, I knew I felt him 
I felt him kind of telling me to love him, but there was one time I actually heard like, just love him. Other than that, it was just this piece that he would keep filling me with every day because I wanted to not love him, honestly, for years because it was painful. But God just kept filling me with that love, but it's not like he was talking to me every day. And so I think so many times, like I was praying and he was praying, but we weren't getting answers right away. And I think so many times with prayer and things, we expect God to like answer right away where really I was just called to love him, not you know, to well, yeah, and, and you showed up weak. Yes. And then he filled your love. So yeah. that, that's another cool part of many it. days. I didn't have a whole lot of love for you. Yeah. And many days you didn't have a whole lot of love for me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I, I like, I like what you're saying, Shay. And I think that was what Noah mentioned. you showed up weak. I, I think that's another, uh, maybe if we're not actually rec- if we're not recognizing the Lord speaking to us, um, then maybe that would be some step we could take if we wanted to, to, to be able to go. Um, I can, I, for me, I know there's a lot of ways that I can show up weak or, or just walk in humility uh, and, and just being genuine with the Lord and telling him uh, that, well, oh my gosh, today I, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't want to love people. You know, I want to fight. There's so much pleasure for me sometimes in a fight. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, but to be genuine and honest and, uh, and at the same time, I'd want to say, yeah, I'd, you know, I really want to fight, but at the same time, I actually, uh, I want to love people and I want to, you know, so I've got this conflict going on. So I, so I like, I think the idea that would be another, if I were going to list another principle of hearing the Lord, it would be, uh, humility to walk in humility and mm-hmm. um, being genuine uh, with my own weakness and struggles yeah yeah and it, just listening to you guys talk I was just thinking like even if God is talking to me every day and I don't recognize it that's fine with me really because honestly I just like talking to him <laughs> like I really just enjoy talking all day long to him and telling him all my and all my crazy stuff and that's the thing I would like to encourage anybody you can honestly tell him absolutely anything and he just loves you through it and that is the part I really really enjoy with with God with Jesus is just that I can sit down or driving going somewhere or doing anything in the shower, you know, and just start talking to him. And he's, and he listens to it. In any format. It's in not any like format you have too, to yeah. say certain things and you have to do this or he'll not listen. Like it's just a conversation. It's the, like and, you said, it's that simple. Well, yeah. And you can actually yell at him if you're frustrated. And I'm telling everyone right now, he won't kill you. <laughs> Because I've said some bad <laughs> things to him before. Very, very bad things to him. Even when I'm you still ask here. him to. <laughs> yeah. Even when I beg him to kill me. And I'm still here. So nothing surprises him. He's living in us. Just mm-hmm. acknowledge him. Open that relationship. And constantly talk to him. And see what happens. I mean, the joy of, just, I don't know. For me, I, I just like it because... I never feel like I'm alone because like anywhere I go, I'm always chatting with him. And I, you know, like even now I, I can read definitely better, but I definitely question when I read something because I don't know if that's really what it says. So even when now I go in, go in weakness, talking to him, help, having him help me wherever I need to go when I'm driving somewhere new or anything, even when I'm driving to Steve's house, I'm still praying please let me remember how to get there <laughs> so I don't have to text him again where his address is. <laughs> so go in weakness and just. <laughs> well, and I think ultimately on top of what you just said, if somebody doesn't think that they're hearing from God, they can always ask him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Reveal himself and mm-hmm. he will. Yep, and he will. He delights in that connection with mm-hmm. us. Mm-hmm. Exactly.
Yeah, and just like what we're talking about, like what's going on now, there might be martial law. God has never asked me to live two days ahead or one day ahead. He's never even asked me to, to live 10 minutes ahead. He's only asked me to live right now, right in this minute, right now with you guys, day to day. We're just in this moment, moment to moment. And that's how I'm going to keep living. He doesn't call you to live in the future or the past. Yeah, he definitely doesn't. And, you know, with having a daughter with like severe anxiety who comes up with some strange ideas of what could happen <laughs> to her and watching that, but I can yeah. relate. I yeah. like last night, she was totally losing it because she thought she's so worried the house is going to catch on fire and then she's going to catch on fire. That's her biggest fear. But then, you know, I can still take that and look at it and go, oh, that's kind of strange. That's not going to happen. But I can still take that in my own life. And I have some really crazy thoughts too. Like, you know, when we do those Thursday meetings that I'm going to say something that's just going to, everyone's just going to think I'm an idiot. You know, that's the same thing. It's all just fear. Mm -hmm. So it is interesting. God has definitely shown us a lot with Ainsley. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's great. That's great. Can I um, just uh, recap a little bit? Please do. Uh, so, and Barb mentioned something imp uh, important, I think, that uh, your dad, when we did that teaching on hearing the Lord, uh, he said, the enemy, as the voice of a butcher, uh, his, and Jesus said his job is to come to kill, steal, and destroy. And so, so in his voice sounds, and this is how we can distinguish between uh, the enemy's voice and the Lord's voice is, is, is and his voice is harsh, condemning, critical. Uh, you, it uh, usually leads towards evil deeds and um, hatred, judgment. And you mentioned uh, uh, shame, fear, and guilt. Mm. Uh, and the, the, but the Lord's voice is the voice of a shepherd. And the voice of the shepherd is gentle, loving. He's wooing. He can be strong and, and uh, forceful, but he comes and gets you. Uh, and you don't feel the shame, fear, uh, guilt, um, or criticized or judged. Uh, he, he, he's, you know, when he was hanging on the cross, the last thing he said was, forgive them. Mm -hmm. uh, so he... He's forgiving and he leads us uh, into forgive. So I, I think those are things that have been helpful for me over the years to be able to distinguish. And when I'm listening to the voice of the enemy versus the voice of the shepherd and mm -hmm. know that, and, and, and look, kind of like what you've been saying, Noah, is that I don't even have to, I don't, ha I'm not the shepherd. I'm not my own shepherd. And like you said, I'm not other people's shepherd either. Yeah. Uh, I'm a sheep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm a sheep and I have a, I have a shepherd uh, mm -hmm. who's a good shepherd and he does lead me in uh, the green pastures and he guards me with his staff and he brings me to the place where there's food and, uh, and there's water and there's peace and there's joy. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and so if I'm listening to the other voices and all of a sudden, like we were talking earlier, I'm, I'm terrified and afraid. Um, it's not a really problem. It just means there's an opportunity for, for me to turn to the shepherd. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Honestly, it's, it's okay. You know, so if there's um, martial law tomorrow or whenever, uh, or things don't go my way politically, or things don't go my way in my relationship with Barb, uh, those are all uh, actually okay because they give me an opportunity to walk in humility and find uh, that God is still God and he's still my shepherd. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that, I love how you said that, Steve. How, how does that verse go? I, I'm drawing a blank uh, that he says that in <clears throat> John, isn't it? Um, and I know him and I follow him. It says, it says, I my, it says my sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. That's the part. I know them and they follow me. But and, my and I give unto them eternal life. Yeah. My sheep hear my voice. 
Yeah, that's cool. You're his sheep. You hear his voice. I yeah. my, I hear his voice. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like that. Yeah, and I just I wanted to add this real quick. I know it's kind of off the topic, but when when Shay was finally left the drug addict boyfriend, an unbeliever came to her and told her it's okay to go leave him now. And so, I mean, that's, that's when you know God is in everything, you know, definitely when you can look back at that and say, okay, even use an unbeliever. And I mean, this person's still an unbeliever and makes it very known, okay, so that they don't believe in anything like that, come to her and say that. And, you know, God spoke to her to go talk to you. So it's really cool. I really, and well, it made well, me well, let me. Let me th throw out a question there because Shay mentioned something earlier, uh, and and I've seen this where uh, sometimes us Christians are nuttier than others, and we actually and and I you know kind of portraying my bias here, uh, we act like we're prophets and we go over to <laughs> like I had a friend of mine when I first became a believer, uh, a prophet went to her and said you are to be single the rest of your life mm. and she fully believed that person mm. uh, and anyway so how do you deal with that or do you or do you just believe them well i think it goes back into that one the feeling it brings and two continuing to be in a relationship with god because like in my instance, I have been praying to get out of this extremely abusive relationships that I relationship that I now had a baby with, but I had nothing. I literally had 50 cents to my name when I left him. No, I was out of diapers. I was out of wipes. I had nothing, 50 cents, no job. He had stolen my identity. <clears throat> my bank account was negative $4,000. I had nothing. And I kept praying, I need to get out. I need to get out. But I kept thinking, but I need a job and I need this and I need this. And I just kept praying and praying and praying. And it took that person to come up and almost like seal the deal for me, what I already knew I could do, but I almost needed that push. And I felt, I could feel that it was right. You know, there've also been times where people come up to me and say, oh, God told me that you should do this and it doesn't feel right. And I have a relationship with God and he hasn't told me. And I know no one and I have talked about this. And maybe you'd mentioned it earlier of like, God's big enough to also tell you. And so sometimes friends might come up or whatever, but God hasn't given you that same push. God hasn't given you that same message, but somebody comes along and says, oh, I heard from God and he told you this. And for me, in that instance, this unbeliever came and told me what was already in line with what God was already pushing me to do. So it was more of just a confirmation of what he was already doing in my life. Instead of I've had many people come up and tell me something that I'm like, that is not the path that God has me on. And I know that because I'm talking to him and he's leading me <laughs> this way, but okay. But when it feels confused it feels confusing and it feels shameful and it feels not right. That's when you really have to lean in to God and say, this feels really weird and confusing. Is this what you want from me? Because <laughs> this doesn't feel right. Well, and Satan is confusing. He makes everything confusing. So yeah. I think once you are confused, you're like, hmm, I'm going to question this a little bit more. Yeah, God's not a God of confusion. Exactly. Yeah. But in my state, the unbeliever came and basically confirmed what God was already pushing me to do. I just needed to do it. And I did. I do think that's sad, whatever, with your friend that someone went up and said that to him. And then she bit onto that. And is she still single? Is she just, has she no, just. Oh, no, she's been married for a long time. But that was, you know, that was my first uh, encounter as a believer with people that were. Mm -hmm. prophets and and i've had i mean and we've had them actually oh. in our abiding life a group where people are yeah and prophets and count me skeptical because if you're ever wrong i'm going to stone you <laughs> yeah honestly yeah. yeah it's like 
Hey, if, if you if you miss it. if you miss it once, if you miss what you're saying once, you should be stoned as a false prophet. So I think I take it seriously. I really do. Mm -hmm. And and I and I also I'd like to uh, we're I know we're about out of time, but I'd like to throw out this is uh, and I learned this watching your dad counsel people. Uh, one time we uh, he asked me uh, uh, what I would suggest to, in a situation where it was a really complicated. Um, relationship problem and I said well, I'd ask I'd have those people go ask the Lord what they should do because I have like it's way beyond me mm -hmm. and he goes well that's that's it and and then he told me a, a wonderful story of what how they had actually done that and uh, mm -hmm. it was a beautiful reconciliation of wow. uh, multiple people over uh, and, but he didn't tell them what to do mm -hmm. and, and he, I don't know if you ever noticed that if your dad would always if you, if someone uh, uh, would say uh, someone would come up and 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 he and they would say well god told me to and do x y or z mm -hmm. your dad would shut up mm -hmm. and uh because he he's wasn't going to argue mm -hmm. with god right and even if it sounded nuts or mm -hmm. ludicrous uh he would he wasn't i think he just recognized when we say that sometimes uh, and that would be another topic for a good conversation about God and telling us something. Sometimes uh, I've done it, and uh, you know, embarrassingly, I've basically I've said God told me to do this instead of just saying this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And so uh, this is what I'm gonna. In fact, this is what I'm gonna do. Yeah. Every, everybody else be damned. This is what I'm gonna do. Yep. Uh, and but in, but it sounds much better uh, to be able to say well, God told me. Uh, to you know go buy jet skis yeah because yeah. then no one no one can argue with you then yeah exactly. like what Barb, what's barb gonna say to that yeah what kind of jet skis are you gonna get <laughs> yeah jet skis we got bills to pay yeah, yeah. anyway so uh so maybe that would be a f another fun conversation to have where uh, we could be genuine with each other and about um, using uh, maybe the Lord's name in vain. Maybe that's really what it is. Yeah. Uh, when I attribute something that I want to do or and say, well, oh, God told me this. Uh, yeah. But that would, that's, that, yeah, kind of, would be a good... that kind of does go in with hearing God and hearing God accurately and uh, genuinely. Yeah, I agree. And I, just to say, I have definitely run into some prophets that say they're prophets and have come up to me and say they're going to lay hands on me and pray for me and I'm going to be healed because you know I got throat problems and joint problems so you know they do that and they say you're going to be healed in seven days <clears throat> have I ever once thought that it was going to happen no so maybe it's on me for not thinking it's going to happen but I have enough faith, Noah. <clears throat> yeah I guess I just don't have enough faith but Except for you prayed for God to heal you and he told you no. Yeah, I have prayed to God and he did tell me no. So, <laughs> But, you know, it is it is interesting to me, definitely in the Christian world, to try to pretend that you're more spiritual than others. And that is the, I guess that's the rub, right? That's the sad part about it is we're all the same. You guys are exactly like us. We have the same Jesus in us. He talks to us the way he wants to talk to us and that's it mm -hmm. it's very that beautiful. Easy. Very beautiful. you know and simple yeah it's simple so and if someone calls me with something and god gives me something to tell them it comes out very natural it mm -hmm. comes out in the conversation and it really has nothing to do with me it has to do with them and Jesus saying, yes, this is what we want. This is what we're hearing here. This is, you know, resonating with them. So it really takes the pressure off of me as well mm -hmm. as the person sharing the message with someone because it really has nothing to do with me. And it makes me not have a big head, which is even better. Well, I wish those guys had been right and they'd healed your body because it's painful to watch you suffer. That's, yeah, me too. I wish, I wish it was healed, but... Yes. Yeah. I mean, I've had a bad thing. What's that? You might argue with God. I know. I might as well. 
<laughs> I don't mind. Actually, I don't mind. And he's, he's very patient. Yes, he is. Ooh, we're really patient. So, but yeah, I think, uh, I think bottom line, at least for me is keep, for me, keep the door open constantly. I, for me, I just talk to him all the time. And so I'm probably having hours of long conversation with him, but he's not with me. So, <laughs> but I enjoy, I really do enjoy just talking to him. I haven't felt his presence in a pretty long time, but I'm okay with that because I'm just constantly talking to him. I really do feel like we have a good relationship because I'm always talking to him. So that's my two cents on that. Anybody else want to say anything before we end it? I would like to argue with you about not feeling his presence, but I think you don't know you are. That's all. But I don't have to say that. <laughs> and maybe it's different for everybody. Yeah, it is. I mean, I've I've definitely have felt it many a times, but like day to day, I don't feel it all the time is all I'm saying. And I'm okay with that. That's all I'm saying is I don't have to feel his presence to talk to him. Right. I just enjoy talking to him. And I don't have to talk to him to feel his presence. That's true. I actually don't. You don't, and, uh, I you don't have to do anything, honestly. True. So, so, so we're all good to go. We're all different. And yeah, you might never stop talking. You don't, you always stop talking when you're around me. Uh, so I'm getting a little pissed off, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but it's great that we can walk with the Lord in our walks with the Lord. Mm -hmm. as, our, as our friend wrote, abiding, our abiding walks with the Lord, they all look different. Mm -hmm. uh, just like we all look different. We have different bodies uh, in our walks with the Lord, of course, they're going to have different gates and we'll have different mm -hmm. styles and some of us will run faster and mm -hmm. some of us will limp. Uh, mm -hmm. And, uh, but anyway, we get, we get to, uh, communicate and connect with him and i just really appreciate uh, you guys sharing your hearts and uh, lives and expertise and barb being here with us i'm so grateful mm -hmm. she's here with us because yeah. she's been my best teacher over the years in lots of ways and she has a super keen ear for the lord's voice and i'm grateful for that and yeah. so i'm i'm grateful for this conversation yeah me too. too yeah we are too and thank you guys for sharing your hearts and barb thanks for coming on that's well, that's special that. to see you on here Good being with you and just to put in a plug for our abiding conversations on thursday evening denver time at 6 p.m if you're interested and uh, listeners are interested in participating in uh, these kind of conversations with us um just Send Noah an email. What's the best email, Noah, to send you? Uh, it's Noah Wells. Yeah, Noah Wells 7 at gmail.com is the easiest. Great. It'd be, and it's great to have anybody who wants to join us. Mm -hmm. It is. It's a lot of fun. Unless you're perfect. And if you're perfect, then it's like we probably don't want you because we're just human people here that abide. Yeah, really weak people there. So, yes. All right. Well, thank you so much, guys. And, um, We'll do another podcast soon. Thanks, Noah. Thanks, Shay. Yep. Thanks to the listeners. All right. Bye. Bye.